Hey everybody, welcome to Planes Over It and uh, today we are doing uh, MTOW calculation which is uh, an important part in the performance section of the A320. So before actually we start off this uh, video, I would want you to go to the description, download this chart that I'm going to use in this video and uh, get your uh, paper and pen ready because uh, I would suggest you follow me on paper and pen uh, as we talk through the video so that it will help you as well and if you do not know about the rtow chart here please go to the previous video and understand about the rtow chart because i'm not really going to explain the components of the rtow chart here and before we proceed uh, to the mtow calculation i would want to bring to your notice uh, this temperature here i will just zoom it as well so T ref 44, T max 55. Now, uh, somebody asked me what uh, T ref and T max is, so that I'm going to explain that first before we step into the MPW calculation. So, this is a takeoff performance uh, standard uh, graph. So, takeoff optimization is calculated for a given run runway and its obstacles, and for given conditions for flap settings of flap settings, temperature, wind, and QNH, etc. The calculation produces a maximum permissible takeoff weight that is MTOW or maximum takeoff temperature of an actual weight. The takeoff thrust produced by the engine varies as follows. Now, this graph is very important to us. Now, T ref, as you can see, is marked here. So, it is the maximum flat rating temperature. What happens is the thrust at max takeoff rating is certain value here. Okay. This value is your thrust at max takeoff rating. So T ref is the maximum temperature till that temperature the engine can produce the flat rated thrust. thrust. But after that certain temperature, it will start to drop. The thrust will start to drop and it will reach a point where it reaches T max, which is maximum certified temperature for takeoff. You cannot take off beyond that temperature at a given altitude. Of course, this chart is made for a given altitude. So, uh, the chart that I have taken is uh, Chennai. So, the T ref there is 44. So, below 44 degrees, the thrust will produce, if in case you require maximum takeoff rating, it will produce the maximum flat rated thrust. But after beyond 44, it, the thrust will start to drop. Okay. I hope this is clear. T max is your temperature, maximum certified temperature for takeoff. Now we can actually step into the question itself. So I want you guys to note down this data somewhere as you solve the sum with me. Okay. So the data is uh, OAT is 25. I've just taken Nilwin conditions for the sake of it. It's easier. QNH is 1003 and uh, air conditioning is on. Engine anti-ice is on dry runway. Structural weight of this aircraft which I have taken is 73 and a half tons. Okay. Now the question is find the MTW and associated V speeds. All right. So this data, I hope you have noted down and then I'll proceed further. So uh, this is a Chennai uh, chart, as you can see, runway 30. Doesn't matter just for the sake of understanding the question, we've taken some runway. Otherwise, the runway is also mentioned in the question or sometimes a, a, a crosswind is given. So you have to decide which runway you want to take off on, preferably always the component with headwind greater so now what you do in the mtw calculation is since your temperature was given 25 you try to find out in the nil wind conditions in the nil wind conditions column that is here here and here for both the configs we find the temperature closest to 25 and as you can see it is increasing 52 54 57 60 63 here also 52 54 57 60 63 it's, it's increasing so the closest possible is this box here okay for config 1 and config 2 so these are the boxes so i've just noted down the boxes weight is 73 and a half plus 0.1 as i told you in the previous video it becomes 73 and 73.6 and here it is 0 0.4 73.5 plus 0 0.4 73900 okay now the box temperature is this 52 here also it is 52 so we have noted down here box temperature these are actually 
OAT is only in some ways I'll talk to you when, when we do the corrections. So these are box temperatures and V speeds I've just picked up from here 146, 47, 48 and here 143, 44, 48. So this is the first step, pick up the data, pick, decide your box that you're going to use. Once that is done, there's something called as grad corrections, gradient corrections. Now I was telling you that this temperature is actually your OAT. Okay maximum OAT for that condition but the actual OAT today is 25 degrees right so we have to give some correction to bring this box to that certain value 25 so that correction is called the gradient corrections or grad corrections in short form short form so that correction here is 80 450 and 60 530 so first step is just noted down I've noted it down 80, 450 and 60, 530. And I've noted the temperatures again for you guys. OAT 25, TREF was 44, as you can see here as well. TREF 44, okay. And uh, then box temperatures 52 in both cases. In the previous slide, I showed you that. Okay, so once this is noted, then we will apply the grad corrections. Now apply grad corrections like this. Make two columns, config 1 plus F and config 2. This diagram is the same diagram, takeoff performance diagram that I showed to you. Now you have to write the OAT, TREF and box temperature in order, increasing order itself. So your OAT is less than TREF and box temperature is greater than TREF. Once this is done, you will write the grad corrections. Now grad, if you remember it was grad 1, grad 2, 80 and 450. 60 and 530 for config 2. So grad 1 will come in the first box, grad 2 will come in the second box. Here also the same case. Then, now you find the difference between these temperatures 25 and 44, that is 19, 52 and 44, that is 8. 44, 25, 19, 52 and 44, 8. Do this for the same for both the configs. Okay, so depends on the box temperature basically. If your box temperature, luckily in this question that uh, I've taken, the box temperature remain, happens to be same. So the chart looks similar, but the grad corrections are different. All right, so that can make a difference. Next is multiply the difference you got here, the difference you got here with the grad correction above. So 19 into 80 and this difference into 450. Similarly, 19 into 60 here, 8 into 530 here. So as you can see here, 19 into 80 is this and this. And 19 into 60, as I just told you, and 8 into 530 will give you this. Add both of this, 1520 plus 3600 is giving you 5120. And 1140 plus 4240 is giving you 5380. Okay. Now the final grad correction is you apply this, add this weight to the weight that you had calculated. So if you remember 73.5 plus 0.1 was there, 73600 plus 5120 is added here, which leads you to the final grad correction weight. And in this case it was 73.9, which again you add this to this and it becomes 79.280. Once this is done, we are ready with the grad corrections done. So this this weights signify that it has been corrected for the outside air temperature of 25 degrees. Okay, as you can see. Now sometimes uh, TREF is actually sometimes possibly low. Say TREF is say 30 degrees and your OAT is 35. So TREF will come first here, then OAT and then box temperature. Okay, so in that case you will apply only get one correction. Okay, so grad 1 say 80 and 450 is there, you will apply only 8 correction. Suppose your break is lower to some 40 here. Okay, apply the correction for grad 2, OAT, difference is 40 and 25, so 15. So you are getting 15 and doing the grad 2 correction. Alright, so this correction is there in the FCOM, you guys can check it out, it will be much easier there. So as, as far as that is concerned, the grad correction is done, which was picked up from here. Next corrections we have to apply. This is the bottom uh, of the chart. I have just cropped it for easier uh, visibility. So 
Next, we have to apply these three corrections. Runway condition was dry, so we will apply any wet corrections. Influence of delta pressure, which QNH correction is what we are going to do. Before we actually do that, we will look at the TVMC here, as you can see. Okay, so we will just go to AUX, it is plus 67 here and plus 67 here. So both it is 67. So if your temperature is greater than 67, you will actually apply the gray area. Okay, you will apply this lower box. If it is not, you will apply the upper box, which is this one and this one. Okay, so now wait after grad correction, I've just copied it from the previous slides. All right, once that is done, now for minus 15 QNH, if you remember the QNH was 1003 given in the question. So for minus 15 QNH, the weight correction here is 1000 kilos, as you can see, minus 1.0. And here it is minus 1.1, as I've written here. Okay, so now we have to find, but the difference is minus 10 only. 1003 uh, is 10 below standard. So we have to find for 10 in both the cases. So 10 into 1000 by 15 is giving you minus 667. And 10 into 1100, which was correction picked up from here, is 733 for minus 10. Once this is done, we will apply this to the grad correction values we had got. 7 8 7 to 0 minus 6 6 7 for config 1 plus f and you got some value here and uh, 7 9 2 8 0 minus 7 33 which is also given you some value here so just keep this values noted continuously now we, uh, we have to apply v speeds correction as well as you can see here v speed correction for qnh is minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 now actually we should be technically calculating for minus 10 uh, delta QNH, but uh, since minus one is anyway a, a small value, so you don't want to uh, give corrections to the V speeds in decimals. So you might as well just pick up these values. So minus one, minus one, minus one, and here it is zero, zero, zero. So no V speeds correction. So 146 minus 145, 47, 46, 48, 47, that is done. And there is no correction to the V speeds on the config two. Okay, so this is done with the QNH correction. Now we have to apply air conditioning correction because in the question it was given air conditioning is on. So air conditioning corrections, I have picked up weight after QNH correction is 78053 and for config 2 it is this. Now air conditioning correction, just go to the air conditioning row and as you can see weight is here and this is the weight here. Minus 2.1 tons, minus 1.6 tons. So I've just directly picked it, picked it up and put it here and we'll apply this correction to the QNH weight that we had found so 78053 minus 2100 is giving this value 78547 that is here minus 1600 is giving you this value once that is done we'll apply for V speeds correction there is no V speed correction here also and here also so the V speeds are not affected by the air conditioning on this chart okay so the V speeds remain same that were corrected for QNH. Now when this is done, there's another condition of anti-ice being on. Now this is not available in the chart because if you remember the chart is made for anti-ice off conditions. So we have to go to the FCOM, go to this performance, takeoff, takeoff data 24 and you'll find tables like these. Now I have picked up effect of QNH and bleeds up to 9000 200 feet because Chennai is at 49 feet elevation so we'll be using this table if you go to the FCOM you'll find uh, various other tables that will have talking about high altitude and for about 9200 feet and you know all of that so I've just picked up this table now we'll just look for engine anti-ice on okay now this correction on weight if takeoff with full thrust is performed is to be given and subtracted 300 kilos but there's a star mark here corrections valid only for oat less than 10 degrees so the oat that was given to us was 25 so in this case we shall not be applying any engine anti-ice on corrections okay since our oat is greater than 10 and this is corrections on weight if takeoff with full thrust is performed so in in calculating mtow we generally happen to consider full thrust only all right so if the temperature was say 5 degrees then we would have subtracted 300 kilos on both config 1 plus f and config 2 
I just showed this table to you for your understanding. But uh, on this question, we shall not be applying any anti-ice correction. So this you can find in performance takeoff and takeoff data at 24. All right. So once this is done, this table, by the way, is also used for flex temperature, which I will show you uh, in the next video. Now, there's something called a CG corrections. This is also there in the FCOM itself in the takeoff uh, performance. Now, if the RTU chart, generally all the RTW charts are based at 25% CG forward. Okay, the crew can find the takeoff performance at a more forward CG by decreasing the takeoff weight by 1000 kilograms and increasing V1, VR, V2 by 1 knot. So, 25 CG is the basic, 25% uh, CG is the basic certified limit on which all takeoff competitions are based. To take into account the operational margins, the above penalties must be applied when the operational CG is forward 27%. So, in case your CG is 27% forward, then we shall be decreasing the takeoff weight by 1000 kilograms and increasing V1, VR, V2 by 1 naught. So again, uh, I'm just assuming that the CG on this is uh, certified uh, at 25%. So we shall not be applying any CG corrections, but this is important for you to know. Okay, so after we have applied uh, all these corrections, NTIS we didn't uh, apply and uh, CG also we didn't apply, assuming that it's 25% CG. We have applied QNH corrections, we have applied air conditioning corrections and the runway was dry, so we have not applied any wet corrections. We applied the temperature correction, which is the grad corrections. And after all of that, we arrived at these weights and speeds. So config one plus F, 75953, config two, 76947. V speeds were given this. Now the rules to decide MTW and V speeds are simply select the configuration with higher takeoff weight. Okay, so in this case, it is obviously config two. Now, if equal by chance, then select the configuration with lowest V speeds. That is the role of V speeds here. So, in case if this happened to be equal, then we would have gone to the lower V speeds. Anyway, in this case, also config 2 has lower V speeds as you can see. So, config 2 is the answer. Final answer config 2, max takeoff weight is this, and V speeds are these. Now the interesting part is the structural limit I had given in the question was 73,500 kilos. So you obviously cannot take off with 76,947 kilos. In such cases, the maximum landing weight, which is 64,500 kilograms becomes a limiting factor to calculate the actual takeoff weight. So you will be calculating since your maximum takeoff weight is allowed up to 77 tons, but your limit, the structural limit itself is 73 and a half kilos 73 and a half thousand kilos so you cannot carry more than that anyway but in such cases the maximum landing weight which is 64 and a half tons comes into picture so you can actually carry 64 and a half tons plus the fuel burn off and all of that which will be your actual takeoff weight so i hope you guys have understood the maximum takeoff maximum permissible takeoff weight calculations and uh, if you have any doubts just let me know drop a comment below i will surely get back thanks for watching guys subscribe to my youtube channel and like the facebook page for regular updates give the video a thumbs up if you like the video and do not forget to share it too and uh, you could always connect to me uh, through youtube facebook whatsapp email on the links uh, mentioned and uh, Cheers and happy landings guys. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. I will see you in the next video where we will perhaps be talking about flex temperatures. Take care guys. Bye-bye.